In order to be a fantastic .NET developer, you need to know the ins and outs of the entire framework. The discard variable, while pretty simple to use, is often unknown by a majority of software developers. So let's change that. Before getting to any code, we're going to do a quick 90 seconds introduction to discards, starting So discards were first introduced into the C-sharp specification from V7, which means you can only use discards in certain versions of .NET. Now, a discard variable differs greatly compared to classic variables. So let's take a string. The purpose of a string will allow you to get some text, assign it to memory so you can reference. And a discard does the complete opposite. So when you use a discard in your code, you're basically saying that you don't care about the return value from any type of expression. Now, the benefit of using a discard, kind of like an unassigned variable, is that you're clearly saying in code you don't care about the return value. Now, you're also telling the compiler you don't care about the return value. This means the compiler will allow you to write certain type of code that you couldn't before. So let's say we did the operation one plus one. Now, if you didn't assign that to a variable, what you're going to do is get an exception which says only assignment calls blah, blah, blah can be used in statement. Now, when you get those type of errors, if you just add them into a discard, you can get rid of them. So we'll go through an example of creating a guard which demonstrates this. Now, the final benefit is obviously performance. Because we're not assigning values to memory, you're going to have a more streamlined application. Yeah. But that is the benefits of discards in 90 seconds. With that introduction nailed, let's have a look at the six areas in code where discards will make your code better. I'm going to kickstart this discard showcase with the area where I think discards add the most amount of value to our code, and that is pattern matching. So .NET 1 had no pattern matching, and over the years, pattern matching has got better and better, with recent versions allowing us to do pattern matching with enumerables or lists. So this means that I can do some pattern matching with the example I've got on screen. So I've got an int array, and as you can see, we've got a sequence of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Simple. Now, in order for us to define a discarding code, we use the underscore character. And this is an example of me saying, I don't care about this assignment. So on its own, this makes no sense. But let's say that I just had this line of code. This is going to throw some sort of exception. We've got a warning. So using a discard will allow me to write a certain amount of code that I couldn't before. Now, in order to do some pattern matching, we need to use the is operator. And then we also need to use the square brackets. And in this example, I'm doing it on a single statement. However, you could do these maybe in an if statement, a switch statement, whatever makes you happy. Now, the pattern that I've created here is simple. You can see that I've got three discards. And what this is saying is ignore value one, ignore value two, and then match on the third sequence here. And then the final discard here is saying ignore everything after. Now, let's refactor our pattern to make it really easy and obvious. Let's say now that we just want to map on anything which contains a one at the beginning. What we can say here is here's my pattern that I want to match on. And then here's my discard. And my discard in this instance is saying, let's ignore everything like this. Simple, see? In the second example, we're going to look at how we can use a discard to write code that the compiler wouldn't allow us otherwise. In order to demonstrate this principle, we can refactor the code on screen so it runs on a single line. Now, before we refactor it, let's have a look at what this method is doing. So we're being passed in an argument called my param. Now, I don't want that method to run unless my param has some sort of value it has been assigned to. So we're doing a null check. And then if it is null, throw an argument exception for safety. So classic guard. Now, it's possible to refactor this into a single line using the null coalesc operator. So instead of having an if statement and braces and curly brackets, it's possible to use the null coalesce by a double question mark and then writing a bit of code like this. So this is doing exactly the same thing. Now, the issue with this, as we can see by the big red squiggly wiggly line underneath, is that this is a legal syntax. And the reason for this is we're running a statement and the result of this statement isn't being assigned to. So this is where our discard can come to our rescue. If we assign this statement to a discard you can see that we've now refactored that line into a single statement now i'll leave it up to you to decide if this syntax 
is better than this statement. The takeaway is that by using a discard, we can actually start to write code that you can't do without it. So very useful for refactoring things, making things smaller. The next area in code where discard can help tidy things up is when we're calling async methods and we don't care about the response. So let's say that we've got some code and we're trying to log an error message to a server. Maybe we're trying to log an event for an experimentation program. Whatever it is, we're basically calling something, far and forget, we want our application to carry on working because it's time sensitive. To do this kind of call, we'd create a method a little bit like this one, where we're using the async operator, and then the method is returning some sort of response. So in this case, it's a task ball. Now, because we just want to far and forget, we don't care about this. Now, the issue comes that when we actually call our async method, you can see that we've got this squiggly liggly line. And what's happening is, this is an async method, you should consider applying the await. Now, obviously, this is just a warning, not a, a major. Now, one way of getting rid of this squiggly line and fixing it is to assign it to a variable like that, drop is a good one. However, because we don't ever want to use this variable, it's just wasted code and extra bloat. So we can actually tidy things up significantly by just assigning this operation to the discard and our application is going to run very quickly. Another area where our good friend discard can help us out is when we're dealing with methods that return multiple values. Now, whenever we encounter code like this, it's pretty common that we don't really care about all the data being returned. In a lot of instances, we only care about one or two things. Now, historically, without using a discard, you'd have to assign all the results being returned to variables and then just ignore them. However, using a discard is going to make things a lot more cleaner. Now, we can see this in action. We've got this create person object. It's returning four strings. And these strings represent name, address, address to, and postcode. Now, I don't care about anything to do with address. I just want the name so I can display some welcome text. In my example for method below, you can see that I'm calling this method and I'm assigning a new variable name because that thing I care about. And then the address, address to, and postcode, they're being discarded. We don't care about it. Now, this is the only way that I can write this code because if I just try to say name alone, you can see that I'm going to get some sort of compiler error. I don't want to have to do like address or ignore or create variables just for the sake of creating variables. Using discard means that I have a very intentional code that says that I don't care about any of these other things. Please just give me a name and let me carry on. In my final example, I'm going to give you a two for one. You're welcome. So we're going to look at how we can use a discard without parameters to clean things up, also with ternary operators. Now, to demonstrate this, I've created two methods, one called perform operation, one called perform different operation, both return bools. All we really care about is these methods get triggered. We don't care about the response. Now, in order to get this up and running, we're going to have to have some condition, and then we can do the ternary operator using a question mark and the colon. Now, we don't care about the different types of responses. However, if we just don't assign anything, then we're going to get a compiler error. We can't build the project. If we assign it to a result that we never use, we're going to get a compiler warning that we're creating variables that we never used. So, yep, you guessed it. Discard comes to the rescue. The same is true when we're working with out parameters. Now, granted, this is a very contrite example because we're using system ball try pass and you probably wouldn't want to do this code however if you're running third party code which has outs and all you really care is triggering that method and you don't care about the output value we can use a discard in the outs and this saves us from having to write something like useless something like that where we're not going to use it again we'll get a warning from the compiler if we do this so discard here make things nice and tidy as promised, that covers discards in under 10 minutes. This is the first deep dive I've done in under 10 minute series. If you've enjoyed this format because you can't be bothered to watch YouTube videos longer than 10 minutes, let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know what topics you'd like me to cover in under 10 minutes. I accept any challenge. Fight. If you've enjoyed these videos, there's two things you can do which will give me a lot of joy. The first one is... Um, what is it again? Oh yeah, it's smashing on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my content and it also makes you an absolute legend. The other thing you can do if you have enjoyed it is clicking on the like button. 
Now, it means nothing to you. However, it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, shows engagement, also shows me that I should carry on doing these videos. So I'd be very grateful if you can do that. Otherwise, I hope you've got some value from this video. Hope you're having an amazing time wherever you are in the world. Until next Sunday, happy coding.